Hi, Thomas Campbell, Master Club Fitter at Sack and Swing. Today I'm going to talk to you about landing angle. Landing angle is one of the major categories that we look at in a tour van fitting at Sack and Swing. What I did today is I hit three or four shots, straight stock shot, a drawer, a fade, and a knockdown. Just to show you the differences of what, what happens when you shape the shot in, in, a, in a different direction. You will notice here, when I hit my normal standard shots, that is this white circle, you'll notice that my landing angle was 49.5 degrees. I'll give you an idea, tour average is around about 50 degrees for a 7 iron, so I was pretty close right there. What you'll notice with some certain amateurs is the landing average is a little bit lower than that, around about 42, 43 degrees on, on average. What that can cause, and that can cause more rollout on the green. So if your landing angle is not steep enough, that ball's not going to stop on the green very, very fast. So landing angle is highly correlated to peak height. Um, what's really interesting is when I hit some different shots here, is you'll notice when I hit a draw, for example, we'll notice the peak height dropped by about 20 feet in the air. You'll notice also when I hit a fade here, notice what happened is the peak height went 120 feet in the air, so it, it went higher than what I would hit for a normal shot. So if you were trying to shape a shot into a green, hitting a fade is going to cause that ball to fly a little bit higher, give us a little steeper landing angle, also a little bit more spin, and you'll notice what happens to your difference between your carry and total distance. The bouncer roll number went down, so it only it stopped within about four yards. When I was hitting a drawer, you'll notice the spin rate was about 1300 RPMs less. Carry distance was just a little bit further, but you'll notice that total distance, notice how it rolled out about 12 yards. So I didn't have quite as much stopping power because my landing angle was essentially 12 degrees less. So really, really interesting right there. I also played around hitting a couple of different knockdowns as well. So when I hit a knockdown, notice what happened to my landing angle. So landing angle dropped to about 37 degrees. This wouldn't be ideal if I was trying to hit a golf shot into a green and stop it. It'd be great if I was trying to keep it out of the wind or I was trying to roll it up onto a green maybe to a back flag, but it would be a concern because you'll notice that ball took longer to stop. Um, ball spun a little bit less, the launch angle dropped, um, but it's going to be a little more challenge for me to stop the ball. So it'd be a great shot to hit into the wind, maybe not so much if those greens are really, really firm. So landing angle is a really important you know, factor when we start considering whether we should be playing maybe a hybrid instead of like a, you know, a, a long iron. Typically what you'll see, the first shot you hit with a hybrid is it will fly a little bit higher. What happens when you fly a little bit higher, it's going to come to the ground and land a little bit steeper. So your landing angle is also going to increase, which is a good thing. We need stopping power with those clubs. We need that ball to get up, reach its, you know, its, its apex where we need to, so we can get the ball going a little bit further, but stop on the green. When you traditionally hit like a four or three iron, is it's going to come into the green a lot shallower, and then it's not going to stop as fast. So that causes that ball to roll out very, very fast. You're going to have a hard time stopping the ball on the green. So how exactly do you change this uh, landing angle number? So with a driver, one way to do it is make sure that you're hitting it maybe slightly higher on the club face versus lower on the club face. What happens when you hit it higher on the club face, the ball is going to launch a little bit higher and go a little bit further. Also very important with a driver to hit up on it. The ball is on the golf tee. When the ball is on the golf tee, you want to get it more on the up. You don't want to want to take any ground. With an iron, you'd want to hit down on it because the ball is on the ground. So those are two very, very important factors to increase that carry distance. With an iron, you know, probably the most important way to increase you know, your, your landing angle is to essentially strike it more solid. If you're hitting it right in the middle of the club face, that ball is going to go a little bit further. It's going to climb maybe a, a little bit higher. The other two ways to maybe change that landing angle with a 7-iron is you know, maybe changing the golf club. So if you are going to hit a 5-iron versus a 4-iron, it may not go as far, but that landing angle is going to increase because there's more loft on the golf club. Another factor that I touched on briefly here was shaping shots. If you were going to try and hit a little more of a fade, a little bit of a hold off to cause that ball to spin a little bit more, that landing angle is going to increase. If you're going to maybe try and hit a little draw into a, a green or maybe hit a little knock down into a green, that landing angle is also going to decrease. As you can see, landing angle is a very, very important factor when we're looking at getting, getting fit. You know, I would highly recommend coming on in to get, 
get fit with us at Second Swing. That way we can analyze your landing angle and show how all these other factors can influence the landing angle to give you the best potential setup for, in your bag.